yes, 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 yes. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, radio. Radio, we're starting. Yeah, they're in the tent over there. He's waving. We sign the people outside. Please call me Ed and Jazz. Everybody in the camp. There's some refugees here. They came from The Hague and from Amsterdam, or only Amsterdam, right? Amsterdam. Only Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yes. Amsterdam. Yeah. People from Amsterdam from the flood flat came. Oh. Tell the story. Please come and join us and listen to the story. It will be yeah. broadcasted on internet. So now I'm going to speak a bit lower voice because this was for the camp. Um, all right, I'm sitting here with um, Eunice from, from the flip flat. And uh, she's one of the spokespeople of the flip flat often, right? And you're also in the hot red one. And I'm sorry, you, you, I forgot your names. Baeza. 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 And Hanan. And your name was? Omar. 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 Welcome to the Labor Camp. Thank, Thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I heard that you went to the demonstration at the detention center. Right. And it was successful, right? Great. Is this all coming through well, sound-wise? Yes? Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. So I'm going to try and talk as, as little as I can, because this is all about the stories of the people here at the table. And um, what I would like to ask you to do is if you could tell uh, the people here and the people who are listening um, what happened? Why you had to to go away from the country you came from? So, what was the reason for you to flee? And how did you manage to get here? And um, what's been happening to you in the Netherlands ever since? And um, whatever else you you want to share with us, uh, Eunice, you would like to start because you have to go soon. And uh, I would say, um, tell the people. Uh, whatever you choose. English is for more people to be able to understand uh, okay. what is easier for you. Yeah, it's all the English, but then I'll oh. try to English. So. Just try, yeah. yeah. And if you, don't, if you can manage anymore, you just go, switch to Dutch. Okay, no problem. Yeah, the story is long. Uh, hello, my name is Yunus. I'm uh, from South Sudan. And uh, I'm living uh, in Holland here, yeah, but. Uh, 13 years from now, and uh, the story is different, you know. Some people, they have, uh, you know, about a fighting in the country and about uh, political things uh, in, uh, well, I came here because uh, my country, where I live in the South Sudan, it was uh, fighting about, you know, a lot of things, so I don't do some, because when I born also I hear the you know the people fighting there every day in every day I see the people dying. And I decided to, to leave my country because I lost all my family. It's not all but uh, every day I see the people dying now. We don't have any place to stay and every day in my country also move from the place to the place. So and that's why I decided to to, to leave the country to go to anywhere to live because I want to live just like everybody, because see to everybody also. Every day the people are dying, and nobody asks also. Nobody is coming also to help. And I was afraid also for myself. Since that time, the, the family trying to send me to somewhere else. And I don't know, actually, I came in here to Holland. They bring me in uh, some boat, and I came when I, I was in the boat, 29 days, and I was uh, down the ground there, and somebody, every day they come, they bring some soup and uh, bread for me. And uh, yeah, after nine, uh, 29 days, when I, when, I, when I come here in Holland, that time, I don't know actually where, where I'm going. And when I get out, and, uh, because where I, I, I born also in Sudan, I born in, in the South Sudan, in a small village. So, I never been to school also actually, because I have just normal family in, because of fighting, people fighting every day, we don't have even a uh, first place to stay. One, two, three months in one place, and then we move to another place. And uh, yeah, when I came here, I come in Holland, I was outside, 
a serial, just white people on this internet. I never saw it in my life, actually. <laughs> and uh, they start talking with me, English and Dutch. At that time, I not speak any language. I speak only my mother language, and I speak also Arabic, because in Sudan, we speak Arabic also. And uh, I don't understand. They're trying to ask me, where do you come from? Ghana, Sudan, uh, Nigeria, Somalia. And what do you say, Sudan? You call Sudan. I say, yes, yes, Sudan, Sudan. I say, Sudan. And then they call uh, one guy, I think he's from Morocco, of Algeria, I don't know. It's Polish. He speaks Arabic. He come and ask me in Arabic. He said, where do you come from? I say, I come. I'm from Sudan, actually. And when he come, I say, just I come now. And I come with this boat. And... Uh, they said to me, I didn't know where you are. You are now. I said, I don't know, just actually now. I don't know. I was about 29 days in this boat and just came here now. And they said, okay, now this is the police. We are the police. We have to take you to somewhere else because in Holland here, you can't stay uh, without any permission. We have to bring you to somewhere to ask you asylum. I don't know nothing about that actually at that time. And they explained to me, and I was actually afraid for the police and take me there to the travel. And I was 10 days there. And after that, they, are, they bring me to the uh, Dambush. I was in the night there, they bring me in the interview, 15 minutes to ask me where you come from and how we come here to Holland. I explained to them. And then they said to me, okay, go. And after one month, you have uh, the second interview. Let's stay there after one month. They bring me to the assassin in uh, Veldehoven. I was there after one month. They bring me also again to second interview. They asked me what's your, what's your problem, why you leave the country, and I explained to them. And after uh, yeah, about, about 25 minutes, I finished it, and then after three months, we did time now after two, two, two months. I get uh, later from my lawyer that I can stay in Holland here and I'm going to get uh, permission, we get paper, I get everything. And I get it for three years. I was uh, yeah, just working, I get my house, I get everything. And uh, before three years he finished, they sent me later, they say, okay, you have to go uh, fully this uh, from here and I put your picture and you send it back to get uh, another ID card. I make it, I follow it, and I send it back. And after uh, two weeks again, they send, you get some uh, letter for the police. When I was there, they say, okay, we need your uh, document. We need every paper you have here. I give it to them there. Then they say, okay, you have to go back to your country. And then uh, you find now it's closed, and you don't have any help. You are illegal now in Holland. You have to go back to your country. I say, why? They said to me, I don't know nothing, but you can contact your lawyer, and your lawyer can tell you what's happening. Oh, I call my lawyer, my lawyer say, because these people, they don't believe you where you come from. We need some proof, passport of ID card. And actually, also, when I was born in Sudan, in my family, until now, they don't have any uh, passport, they don't have any ID also, because we don't need it, actually. Some people now here, yeah, they don't believe that, really. I don't have it, and until now, the fam my family also, they didn't have it, because we didn't, we didn't need it. We don't travel also, actually, we don't have, if in a good place also to stay. I'm in my country, but, yeah, I've said the whole life just like this. Well, some people, they have good life, they're living there, but we're not. And uh, they don't believe me, they say, you, don't have, you have to bring some, uh, ID of uh, something to prove that you are from Sudan, of you from this place, and something like that. I was uh, from 2005 until that time. The first time, so I lost my work, I lost my house, I lost everything. I was just in the street. And uh, since that time, you know, I have friend, but it's not a good friend actually. But they helped me for one week, two weeks, and I put me in the street. And I'm new here also, I don't have any family, I don't have any good friend. And I was just in the street. The first day, the police came and asked me, say it's not allowed to sleep in, a, in, a, in the street. Because, so I can't see your ID, I said, I don't have any ID. Because 
This is the first time the police is actually in this country. You know, if in my country also I don't have any problems with police. And uh, I say I don't have any ID. He said if you don't have any ID, that means you know you have to go with me. Where I say I have to go, say take you somewhere else because it's not allowed actually if you don't have any ID to stay here. And uh, I said, where? Well, he said, we're going to the police station. When he was there, actually, they asked me my name in Jose and everything. They check it, they say, oh, you are illegal, so we have to take you to the uh, prison. They call him Dosia, Frame de la Just like, you know, jail, they say Frame de la Bavari. <laughs> what is Bavari? I don't know. Anyway, they bring me there, and uh, I was the first time there. I saw it's a lot of people, many people inside also. All most of the people there, they just black people. I mean, you know, African people. And I start asking people, do you stay here for long, and how long you stay here, and uh, when I can go outside? Because from the beginning, of the police, you know, you start checking me take your clothes out, and that's for, all this first time for me. Take my father clothes, and uh, you have, it's really difficult to ask for me. And uh, yeah, the people, they say, we don't know actually how long we're gonna stay here, and nobody know. Some people, lucky they can stay for uh, two, three months here, they give a free. Some people, uh, six, seven months, and uh, nine months, until one year, one and a half years. And uh, yeah, I was the first time I was uh, six months and I uh, get free. And then after two months, also I was inside. Also the police take me because I don't have any place. I mean, uh, anyway, it was uh, five time I was being in uh, in the frame de la I was in the jail. I call it the jail. It's not frame de la actually because uh, last time I was in Zanda nine months in uh, last year's class, in 2012 in uh, Zandam. I was nine, nine months and nine days. And the time I was free and just uh, the, our group, it was uh, just begin there in Amsterdam. We begin to demonstration there. And when I came out and I said, I don't have any place to sleep actually. So I say, okay, I have to go there and uh, we start because I was being in, in the jail five times and nobody know nothing about the uh, refugee, the people out of the city, they don't have paper here, how these people they live in, how difficult it is for the people because I meet the people there in, in the jail. Uh, some people are more than uh, 20 years here in Holland. Some people are more than 10 times in the, in the jail also there. Every time they put in there eight months and not one year and then outside to stay for a couple of weeks and then bring them back. So, and I saw it also many people that would be crazy there also because uh, last time I remember when I was in Zandam, I sleep in one room with one guy from Somalia. And uh, he said to me, Yunus, I have my wife also here and the children, they, no, she, they, they don't have also uh, paper also here. Yeah? They say uh, they li she lives with, uh, with somebody, but you know, more than eight months, and they say to her they, they she has to go. And she does. She have two children, and she don't know where to go. And uh, her husband is in the jail with me. And I said, you know, I just uh, take it easy, and I hope everything going to be okay because it's not easy, I know that also. So the sec uh, first day, second day, after three days, we're sitting like this and then you can't even talk with the people outside because we have a uh, couple of hours to stay, to sit outside. It's not outside actually to talk with the other people, I mean. And about three days he didn't talk, I tried to talk with him. And he said to me, yeah, do you know what, it's really, I can't. The last time he said, okay, I'm going to take some shower and I come back. After 20 minutes, he come outside without any clothes and he was laughing and crying same time. It's, be cra it's crazy, just. And the security come to take him, they put him down the stairs. And the second day, the police, uh, the doctor he come to check, he say, oh, this guy's crazy, just. we have to take him to the second day. So, I was thinking about that, you know, the people, there's nobody thinking. Last time, really, when I was in Zandam, I think the no-border group, 
he was in Zandam, in Zandam, in 2011 actually, in October, something like this. And it was a day to demonstration. And I was sitting alone, it was too hot. I was inside and I heard just freedom, for it, freedom, something like this. And just when I look it for the windows, I saw the people outside there. And uh, I was crying really. Because nine months and nobody came to visit me, nobody asking about me. I tried to call the people also outside, nobody helped. And I said, no, uh, still the people are thinking about us outside. I was really crying and I guess I was uh, doing it in, in, in the windows. And the people they hear it and we start doing the whole the, uh, present there. And everybody was just freedom, freedom inside. It was really nice. And that's why when I come outside and I see this group, we begin to demonstration. And I like to make demonstration in, 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 in the jail there to yeah, we have to do something really. It's difficult inside there for the people. Some people it was more than 10 times. When they came outside, a couple days, some people, because I saw it also. Uh, sometimes I sit with somebody, you know, and uh, after two, uh, I sit for one year there, and after two, three days, you get free. Two, three days outside, and then I bring him back again. I'm going to say, must say also for one year, so a couple months, I was there. So really, that's, uh, we, we must do something, actually. And the problem is we didn't choose also to come here in Holland. If in my country also now, we have refugees coming from another country. And that's why I like this no border. Yeah, no border in the world. Just let the people to, to live, really. Let the, everybody live. We don't have, I didn't have, I didn't do anything bad in my life in Holland also here. And 13 years, I never have any problem. So why? I want to just live like everybody. These people also, everybody, they, they, they like. Some people, they don't know it's strong, you know? If you put somebody two, three, four times in the jail, that means you push him to go to the wrong way. Some people, they can't, you know? They want, they're trying to do something, you know, to live because they don't want to go back to the jail. They don't want to go back also. And the problem is we can't go back to our own country. I don't want to talk too much, but uh, I think until now is enough. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Luis. Which one of you would like to take the microphone next? Before we go?